So today we celebrate with Israel, we celebrate with the Messianic community this day of Shavuot. We give Elohim thanks that he has sustained us, kept us alive, and brought us to this time. We have been counting up the Omar over the last 49 days, and we want to thank God for as many of you who were able to join and contribute in one way or the other. And now we are here. This is what we have been counting on. This is what we have been counting up to. And for us, at least, we acknowledge this time of the given of the Torah and the given of the Ruach HaKodesh. And so today, God has put upon my heart to, to speak to us a word that I trust would be of a blessing, edifying the body of Messiah. Those of you who are gathered here and those who are looking at us online and those who ever may be look, looking at this trash after, all right? So we want to look at the title that God has given us, The Spirit and the Adat Yeshua. The Spirit and the Adat Yeshua. So tell you up front that there are two words for congregation, Kahal and Adat. And Adat speaks to that witnessing community. So basically, this is the spirit and the witnessing community, this community of disciples of Yeshua. The spirit is needed for us to bear witness. The spirit is needed for us to assemble. The spirit is needed for us to show that we are witnesses. We have received his power from on high. So do we want to consider this thought? And I pray, God, that you would be able to help us to see these things Beshem Yeshua. So consider our master. As a man and as Messiah, Yeshua of Nazareth led a spirit-saturated existence. Now I want to say that again. As a man and as Mashiach, Yeshua of Nazareth, localized, Nazareth, right? He led a spirit-saturated existence. Let that sink deep down into our hearts and our minds. So for com from conception to resurrection, he was anointed by the Spirit. And I pray God by his, by his Spirit, we would open our eyes to see how he relied on the Spirit and how you and I need to be doing the same, individually and collectively. So let's take this journey again. Look with me at Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Let's see our Mashiach, this Word who became flesh, and responding to the angel, the angel said to her, speaking to Miriam, the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, will come upon you, Miriam, and the power of the Most High, Elion, will overshadow you. Therefore, the one, the Holy One being born will be called Ben Elohim. From conception, I want you to see it, Ruach HaKodesh, overshadowed. See the Shekinah overshadowing Miriam. See the Shekinah moving over her womb. See the Shekinah bringing forth life, bringing forth redemption for Israel and all mankind. So from conception, Ruach HaKodesh. And then all through his life, he was led by the Ruach HaKodesh. But let's look also at his resurrection. So in Romans chapter 8, we are jumping from conception to resurrection, and we see this. And if the Ruach, that's the word for spirit, of the one who raised Yeshua from the dead. Notice, it was God the Father who raised Yeshua from the dead by the spirit, all right, from the dead, dwells in you. The one, that's Abba, who raised Messiah Yeshua from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Ruach who dwells in you. So again, conceived by the Spirit, resurrected by the Spirit, you and I are seeing the parallel. We too need to be conceived by the Spirit. We too need to be resurrected, as it says. I, little children, I labor again until the Mashiach is formed within you so that you could be like him. So even now, pray for that personal overshadowing and that corporate overshadow, not only of our community, but all the flock of Israel, all those who wait for him and long for him and yearn for him. The Ruach Elohim from conception to resurrection. But look at his life. Look with me at Acts chapter 10. 
We read this before. We're going to look at Acts chapter 10, and we see this. Peter is speaking to Cornelius. He's given his sermon, his drash. He said, you know how Elohim anointed Yeshua. Yeshua was not just anointed with oil. He was anointed with the Spirit. So Yeshua of Nazareth with the Ruach HaKodesh, Spirit of Holiness and Power. Spirit of Holiness and Power mean the Holy Spirit's power. The power of the Holy Spirit. Not two separate things, right? How he went about doing good. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. What would the Ruach HaKodesh lead us, lead Yeshua to do? Go about doing good. Oh my God. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil. The devil means slanderer. It means that you and I could be oppressed by lies. We could believe lies about God, lies about ourselves. And in that area that we believe that lie, in that area we are oppressed. Therefore, we need the Ruach HaKodesh to expose those lies and show us. And do good to us and set us free. So I want you to see again, from conception, all during his life, at the end, spirit-led. Sometimes you go to a, a, a cemetery and you see born dash death, right? This one born this day, dash death. But that little dash represents our lives, right? I want you to see that. Whatever your date is, born dash dead. That little dash is your life. Notice we have a little time here. Make your dash count. We have a little time here, brethren, before we depart this life. So rather than dash around and put you cash, make your dash count. <laughs> oh my God. But for Yeshua, it was born, dash, died, but then he resurrected. So there's a long line that is still continuing. You didn't get that. Oh my God. You play back the video and you'll get that. Right, Baruch Hashem. But I want you to see he's alive forevermore <clears throat> by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he gives us these scriptures. Second Timothy tells us, he gives us these scriptures. All scripture is God-breathed, is inspirited. He gives us the spirit. All scripture, all scripture. And when Rav Shul wrote that, there was no New Testament. When Paul wrote that, uh, when Rabbi Saul wrote that to Rabbi Timothy, there was no New Testament. There was only... Genesis to 2 Chronicles. That's how the arrangement is in the Jewish Bible, right? So all scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching. Of course, we know now the scriptures include Genesis to Maps. Say, so what, Lord, what book, is, what book is Maps? Yes, even the maps behind the Bible is inspired. <laughs> the maps at the back is not maps of Canada. It's maps of Israel, all right? So, Berkeshire. So all scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, Mm, for reproof, for restoration, and for training in righteousness. The scriptures are inspirited. They are God-breathed. Remember, the spirit is breath. So when you pick up your Bible, don't be surprised that you see the leaves going up and down. Because it's life. It's life-given. It's life-given. It's a life-given spirit. So when you read, you're being washed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is moving to and fro throughout the book. That's why you need to know the book. You can go to and fro throughout the book from Genesis to Timothy to Titus to Zephaniah to Haggai to Psalms back to Jeremiah. Go to and fro throughout the book because it's one book. It's a seamless garment. And the Spirit of God will take you on a journey beyond imagination. That's why we read the book of Ezekiel, the chariot of God. Oh, my God. Did you see it? The chariot of God. You are the chariot of God, and you should be moved wherever the Spirit wants to go. <clears throat> if you listen to what Sid read, wherever the Spirit wanted to go, that's where the wheel went. You are wheel within the wheel. You are mystery of God. You are the neshama of God. There's mystery about you. That's why people can't understand what you do. Because there's a mysterious part of us. But I want you to see you're the chariot of God. And you'll be born along by the Ruach HaKodesh. Oh, Father and King. So this spirit is moving to and fro. And he's illuminating, he's enabling us. He's making the word become flesh. He is animating us. That's why the master said, the words that I speak to you in John, the words that I speak to you in John 6, they are spirit and they are life. This is a spirit man. 
A man with God consciousness, a man that is God intoxicated, he speaks in John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, he speaks and the Spirit gives life. It is the Spirit who gives life. I want you to see that. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no benefit. The words I have spoken to you, the words I am still speaking to you, they are spirit and life. Spiritual life which means every dead and dying area of our lives can be resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Yeshua said, ah, I'm giving you this. So this is this man, Yeshua, in right relationship with God. He receives the Ruach HaKodesh and he's telling us to bear witness. Now look with me in Colossians 2 verse 9. We see this in Colossians 2 verse 9. For all the fullness of deity lives bodily in him. This is Mashiach. All the fullness of deity lives bodily in Yeshua. Yeshua is fully man and fully Elohim. I keep saying it again and again. I get myself in trouble, but I love that kind, that, that kind of trouble. Yeshua is fully man, the son of man. He's fully God, the word made flesh. For all the fullness of deity, divinity, lives bodily in him. Now think about it. In this man, this happens, right? So if so, for the man, Yeshua, this is my point, how much more we corporately need to embody the spirit of the living God? I want you to see it. If the man, Yeshua, was fully led by the spirit, if the man, Yeshua, had deity in him, then the corporate expression of Messiah must be led, must be full of the Ruach HaKodesh. That's the point that I want to drive home to us. That we would be to others the same he has been to us. So he tells us in Luke chapter 24. In Luke 24, he tells us, listen, I'm going up. I'm going up. I want you to consider this. Behold, he says, I'm going up. I'm about to ascend. But I'm sending the promise of my father. I'm sending the promise of my father. He is the promised Messiah. Came to the promised land. With the promise of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. The promise of my Father upon you. But you are to stay in the city of Jerusalem, right? Until you are clothed with power from on high. He tells them, stay there. He goes up on the 40th day. He says, starry, tarry here. Until the Ruach HaKodesh comes. Until you are clothed with power from on high. Because you need to be clothed, Elisha. You need the mantle of Elijah. You need to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the mantle of Yeshua to fall upon his body. So that we could be to each other as he was to his first disciples. Look at in the prophet Isaiah. We have a similar thought in prophet Isaiah. Until the Ruach is poured out on us from on high. I want you to see when a master spoke, he always is alluding to the Tanakh. Always. So when he spoke what he spoke, he was quoting here from Isaiah. Until the Ruach is poured out on us from on high. And the desert becomes a garden. That's what happens when the Ruach HaKodesh comes upon your life. Your desert life becomes a garden. And those of you that love gardening, and you go out and you see your flowers, you should thank God. Oh my God, he's exposing and uh, uh, pulling up the weeds. But the flowers are there. The fruit of the Spirit is there. And a garden becomes like a forest. Oh my God. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the garden. Oh my God. The result of righteousness shall be shalom. What is the kingdom of God again? Righteousness, peace, and joy. And the effect of righteousness will be quietness. Oh my God, and confidence forever. That's how you know you're full of the Holy Spirit. My people will live in a peaceful place, in secure dwelling, quiet resting places. Now notice, this is a promise for Israel. Because the Spirit is going to be poured out upon Israel. But for those who are grafted into the olive tree of Israel, we get to experience that promise even now. That's what we're celebrating today. So look again at the prophet Joel. The fathers give this promise. So it will be afterward, after all those things that I spoke about, afterward, I will pour out my rock on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Mm. Not just foretell, but foretell. 
They would speak powerfully by the spirit of the living God. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I want you to see that. Your old men will dream dreams. Is it me that, okay, I have to wait until I become an old man? And what if I'm an old woman? And who is me, right? No, it doesn't mean that. He's trying to tell us something. Those who are mature, not just chronologically, but by the Spirit, you will dream the dreams of God. Oh, my God. John told us, I write to you, little children. Your sins are forgiven you. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the Spirit of God abides in you. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. Brethren, when the Spirit of God comes upon your life, you will grow from a little child to become a father. We're not speaking gender here. We're speaking about maturity in the Spirit. You can't go through life only being a little child. It's one, this is a paradox. You have to be a little child and at the same time grow up. If after 40 years of working with God, all you can say, Lord, thank you that my sins are forgiven, time to grow up, man. Come on. How much time you say, Lord, forgive me my sin, and then run along in the circle again, doing the same sin again and again. You're a little child. You're still in pampas. Okay, God still loves you. But grow up, man. Become a young man. Strong. You resist the enemy. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. You got to know the Torah. So when the tempter comes, it is written. If you don't have an it is written response, you will perish in the wilderness. That's why you have to grow up. That's why you can't just rely on me on Shabbat when you come and you get your, 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 your mind full because Rabbi gives you the Torah on Shabbat. Listen, we're not just a Shabbat congregation. You're supposed to read the Torah every day. That's where you get your strength. And when you come now, it is like a bonfire. But you have to grow up, beloved. And that's what this day is telling us about, right? Grow up in the Ruach HaKodesh. So look at the promise God gives in Galatians. He said, listen, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. The spirit that I promised to Abraham, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. This is the spirit that we have received. The promise of God is the spirit of God. He promised in Joel. He promised in the Torah. He promised in the Psalms. He promised. And God is a promise keeper. So I know the Spirit is here. 2,000 years ago, he came and he still come in. So you and I begin to see this wonderful truth of God. But I want you to see something else as we go on. Just as the people of Israel were clothed, the Shekinah, clothed, and that Israel, the congregation of Israel, to be a witness, here is your the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Just as Israel was supposed to be a witness, as he told them in Isaiah, you are my witnesses, Isaiah. Now he comes in Acts and says, you are my witnesses. So which one? Oh yeah, we are one. We're Eckhart. We begin to witness. Look at this in Isaiah 63. Father in heaven, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Isaiah 63. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. What Israel is going through right now, He's right there being afflicted. That's a God who's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his mercy, he redeemed them. Then he lifted them and carried them all the days of old. Oh, my God. But they rebelled and grieved his Ruach HaKodesh. So the Ruach HaKodesh was in the wilderness with the children of Israel? Yes. He didn't just come on the day of Shavuot. Oh, my God. So he turned to become their enemy. He himself fought against them. Rather than, than bring about that salvation, he brings about that conviction. Conviction of sin, right? Then his people remember the days of old, the days of Moses. That's the Torah. Where is he who brought them through the sea? That the sea of reeds. With the shepherd of his flock. Where is he who put among them his Ruach HaKodesh? Did you ever thought about Israel in the desert? You think they're wandering, don't know where to go? No, 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 no. They're being guided by the Spirit of the living God. As many as are led by the Spirit, the Shekinah was leading them. Come here, come here, stop here, go here, enter into this bus. Don't go here, walk down this time. Don't send that email. Don't send that. You are being led by the Spirit of the living God. That's what he wants us to see. Cause his glorious arm to God, the right hand of Moshe, who divided the waters before them to make himself a name forever. So I want us to see, brethren, what Yeshua walked in and what you and I need to walk in. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, Rav Shaul is speaking and he gives us this powerful text. I love this text. He says, do not get drunk with wine. Some of us need to read that because we need to be read it wrong. Don't drink wine. No, that, that, that's, that's not what it says. It says don't get drunk with wine. 
All right? Oh, I may have lost some of our Pentecostals there. Baruch Hashem. We love you anyway. But he said, don't get drunk with wine. You don't have to drink wine. But if you drink wine, don't get drunk with the wine. Right? Don't be like Noah. For that is recklessness for you to get drunk. Right? Instead, be filled with the Ruach. That's the imperative. Be filled with the Ruach. But there's something powerful about this text that I want to share with us. One. There are four things, actually. One, it's a command. Be filled with the Ruach. That's a command. It's not no suggestion. Be filled. The second thing is that it's a plural imperative. It's not just singular. It's corporately. All of us must be filled. And the third thing, it is in the present tense. Be filled. And the fourth thing, it's a continuous action. Let me say that again for those of you who might be taking notes. It's a command. It's a plural imperative. It's in the present tense. And it's continuous. Oh, my God. Which means, before you came to shul, you should have emptied yourself of yourself and say, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And when you walk in the car park, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And when you walk into this room, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And while you're worshiping, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And while Rob is speaking, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And when he finished speaking, Lord, fill me with your ruach. And when I go downstairs and I wouldn't talk Lashon Hara on Shabbat, fill me with your ruach. You see, it's a continuous thing. And how do you know that you're filled with the ruach? This is what he says. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, to God, our Father. How do you know that you're filled with the Spirit? Our Pentecostal friends will say that you speak in tongues. If you're speaking in tongues, then you're filled. Hmm. I submit that that's a, that's a possible filling. But we're going to read later on how if you are have a new heart and a new spirit, you would find yourself wanting to want to do Torah. So I'm a man who wants to be led by the spirit, have the fruit of the spirit, operate in the gift of the spirit, but I know one definite thing that I can look at, not just speaking in tongues, because not everybody may, may receive that gift or be empowered or have that faith to do that. I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. Oh my God, I speak in tongues less like the Apostle Paul. Yes, this rabbi does, all right? And so it is a gift of God. But I want you to know, he tells us here, how do you know you're being filled? Listen to it again, beloved. In addition to the tongues, right? Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Hmm. It doesn't mean speaking to another about amazing grace. And blessed assurance. You know, it's only hymns. It's a hymns. And the first thing of the mind is amazing grace. Those are beautiful hymns. But Hebraically, the hymns... Uh, and, and, and spiritual songs and psalms are divisions of the psalms. So what he said is that if you're filled with the Spirit, you'll find yourself speaking the psalms one to another. How do you know that you're filled with the Spirit? You're speaking psalms one to another. And you're always giving thanks. Which means if you're murmuring and complaining, let God be true and all of us are liar. We are not filled. We're operating on dregs. And we said that again. You know, if your tank empty or going empty, you have dregs. That's why you hear the murmuring come. You're not filled with the Spirit. Let God be true. If you're giving thanks, if you're able to go through the day, blessing God with the sounds upon your lips, His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, my God. The Lord is at my right hand. Oh, my God, I shall not be moved. Let everything that has breath bless the Lord. You're speaking psalms one to another. Somebody will wonder, what's going on there? You are filled with the Spirit. And if they are filled with the Spirit, they will speak back to you in psalms. But if they're not filled, they say, what are you talking about? If you're filled with the Spirit, you will be giving thanks to God all the time. I love when I go around very elderly people who know that all they have is God in the world. They, they sweep in, the, they sweep in, Lord, I thank you. They sweep in, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. They're able to go to the bathroom, Lord, I thank you. Everything they're thanking God for because they're filled with the Spirit of a living God. But you as a youth... Don't understand that. Say, Mama, why are you thanking God all the time? Your mother, your grandmother, your grandfather is filled with the Spirit. It is, it is sad 
to see an elderly person murmuring and complaining when the best days of your life, you should be thanking God because you're about to meet your maker. You are there murmuring and complaining because you're not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, what are to see that, brethren? And you and I have to begin to do that now. Be thanking God. Thank God in everything and for everything. Give evidence that you're filled with the Spirit. And begin to learn the Psalms. Say, what, Rabbi? Yes, learn the Psalms. Let the Spirit of God take those Psalms and speak to one another. Learn Psalm 19. Learn Psalm 110. As I told you, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall rule in the midst of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. The Lord said, you are king forever after the order of Melchizedek. Speak the Psalms. Speak Psalms. What are Sing because there's a Messiah singing in and through us. You've got to know the Psalms. It's a prayer book of Israel. It's our song book. It is our life. Our lives are called singing to God. And I pray, God, that I would hear words of the Psalms among us. Give evidence that the Spirit of God is here. Because that's what the message is about today. How do you know that you're filled? You're being thankful and you're speaking in Psalms one to another. Yeshua is a life-giving spirit. But I want to give you something that blew my mind at least when I begin to look at it. We can think about Father, Son, and Spirit. But some of us are still stumbling over that concept. But may the grace of Messiah, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Ruach HaKodesh be with you. I don't try to comprehend that. I just apprehend it. He is Eckhart. Irreducible plurality. He is echoed, it indivisible. He is one. Yet he manifests Father, Son, and Spirit. Don't try to figure it out. But what I want you to see something is that when Yeshua ascended, oh my God, he said something in, in John 14, verse 18. I want you to see it. John 14, verse 8, 18. He said this, our master, I will not abandon you as often. Remember, he, on the night of Passover, I will come to you. I want you to get that last part. I will not abandon you. I will come to you. I want you to think that. I will come to you. I will pray the Father that he will send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, the helper, and he will guide you into all truth. Another comforter, but I will come to you. Oh, my God. I want you to see that another comfort I will send, but I will come to you. In other words, if you could receive it, the spirit of the living God is now inexplicably, he's, he's united with the Mashiach. So when the spirit comes, it is as if, oh my God, can you receive this? It is Yeshua himself in our midst. Glory to God. I want you to see that, beloved, and be excited as I am. I'm like, wow, my God, I never saw this before. I will come to you, which means that right now, the Yeshua of Nazareth, and by the way, the one who comes is the same Yeshua who walked the streets of Israel. The same Yeshua who ascended is the same one who descended. The same one. He is in our midst. He is in our I will come to you. Oh my God. We need a strong, a robust pneumatology. That's of the spirit, right? So that we could understand God. We need to, to see this. Oh my God. It's a particular, if you remember in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, we have this man who was. At the gate, and Peter and John is passing by, right? And there's a miracle that is being done, all right? A miracle that's being done. And he said, Listen, Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name, watch this, of Yeshua HaMashiach. Ha, not to read. Get up and walk. I want you to see the particular. They have just received the Ruach HaKodesh, and he says, In the name of that one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Nazarene, the Nutrim, the branches. That's why we are called Nutrim. We are branches because our rabbi is from Nazareth. And Nazareth means the branch. And you and I are disciples of Rabbi Nazareth. Ah, oh my God. May we be a branch in divine. 
Oh my God. But I want you to see, they call on the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the one of Nazareth. Because he's the one who was right there in their midst. The same one who healed in the days of his flesh is the same one who is there with Peter and John. That's what I want to, I believe we need to really get that. When you talk about the spirit, the spirit, and people want to go off in a tongue, and you're talking about the spirit. Well, listen, yeah, that's wonderful, but know that that spirit is the spirit of Messiah. If the spirit of Messiah dwells in you, the spirit of the Lord is with you. The Lord is the spirit. As it begins to connect now, the Lord is the spirit. The spirit is the Lord. I will come. So who has come? Yeshua, the Messiah, the same Jewish Messiah. The same one, beloved. That's why you have to receive him as he was. He's not going to come and do something that is different. He is the same Messiah, a very particular Messiah. And because he's particular, he's extending this blessing universally. So I want us to see this. The apostolic scriptures bear witness to this, brethren. And I want us to see this as we bring, bring this home. One, we need the Spirit of God as a community. Remember, Yeshua did this. So you and I need the Spirit of God. For one, authentic worship. I had you declare that before because I want you to see it again. Authentic worship. Look with me at John 4.24. Our master gave us this. Right? John 4.24. Our master said, God is spirit, and they that are spirit, right? God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. To authentically worship God, we need the Ruach HaKodesh. What does it mean to worship God? Does it mean just to just come and clap and dance? All those things are wonderful, but I submit to us, I said it before, worship is a function of the spirit. Praise is a function of the soul and body. You could only worship by your spirit. Oh my God. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, which means the truth of the spirit, spiritual truth. All right? You need the spirit, you need the truth. That's why today we celebrate the giving of the spirit and the truth of the Torah. Because we want to worship God by how we live. And God is bearing witness to you and I. Oh my God, we are worshiping God. Not my will, but your will be done, oh Lord. There are five functions of the spirit I want you to be no, take, take a note of. One, the function of the spirit, faith. The function of the spirit, conscience. The function of the spirit, discernment. The function of the spirit, communion. The function of the spirit, worship. You see, your spirit, you begin in faith. And you need discernment and conscience to deal with people. You need communion and worship to deal with God. And your spirit allows you to discern, to have a conscience, to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's why we are worshiping God. And to worship means not my will, but your will be done. Abraham said, let us go over yonder and worship. There was no keyboard, there was no drum on Mount Moriah. It was Abraham going to do the will of God. That's worship. Whenever you do the will of God, it begins in your spirit because your spirit wants to obey God. Your spirit, the neshama, wants to obey God. It's you and I giving it a hard time. The spirit wants to worship God. But the Sahara said, no, let's go a different direction. Your spirit wants to worship God or not? Your spirit wants to keep Shabbat, wants to not commit adultery, wants to not. That's what your spirit is. Torah is spiritual. The spirit will always lead you in the paths of righteousness, the paths of Torah. But our evil inclination will say, no, 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 no. Let's go another way. But if you're going to be worshiping God, spirit and truth. So look at this other text in Philippians chapter 3. It says that we are the circumcision who worship God. It is we who are the circumcision. This is Paul writing. This is the Jewish Apostle writing, we are the circumcision, it's just a code word for saying, we the Jewish people, who worship by the Ruach and glory in Messiah and have not depended on the flesh. What do you mean he don't depend on the flesh? He didn't depend on his ethnicity, on his ancestral roots. He didn't deny it, but he didn't depend on it because he worshiped God in the spirit. Oh, to have the Jewish community worship God in spirit. Oh, to have 
Oh my God, I see it, Father. Ought to have Orthodox Judaism worship God in spirit. And to see that Yeshua is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, Father. We who are the circumcision, Paul says, worship by the Ruach Elohim. And those who are of the uncircumcision should also worship God by the Ruach Elohim. I want you to pray, brethren, even now, that you would worship God in spirit and in truth. A second thing that is needed is intimacy with the Father. Intimacy with the Father. What does the word intimacy mean? Into me see God. Intimacy. Into me see God. So look at Romans chapter... Five? Yes, Romans chapter 5. Coming up here, Romans chapter 5. And hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the rock HaKodesh who has given to us. If you want intimacy with God, you want to love God, you've got to know you need the spirit of the living God. There's a text that I was pondering in the book of Revelation. And I wondered about this text and I said, Lord, I've heard this text used so many times. It's in Revelation chapter 3. You know it, Revelation chapter 3. There, there's a text that, that's read, right? And it says this. I've heard it read. I've used it many times. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Remember that? Then? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Right? And I've heard that used so many times for accepting Jesus into your heart. Jesus is knocking at your door. All you have to do is open I want to submit another interpretation. Not discounting what may have gone, but I want to submit another interpretation. This was given to the congregation at Laodicea. A congregation that felt that they were rich and increased and have no need of God. And rather than thinking the church has let Jesus in, it speaks about a congregation who needs to be Washed again in the power of the living God. Who is naked but feel that they're clothed. Who is blind but feel that they could see. Let us see a flow with me. And the Spirit of God is knocking on that congregation. But they can't recognize him. Because they are dead. And he's knocking. I want to come in. But you are arrogant. You feel you're full of pride. You feel you know me. And I'm knocking. If you would open the door and humble yourself and clean your eyes and buy gold tried in the fire, then you will recognize my voice and you will let me in. Are you seeing that, beloved? I want you to think about that again. This is Yeshua. This is the spirit of the living God knocking on the door of your heart, knocking on the door of the congregation. But we are so insane sensitive that he can't come in and he's knocking. We don't recognize when he says, don't have that attitude. Don't speak those words. He's knocking. You're grieving him. He's trying to let, he said, let me in. I will help you control that tongue. Your tongue is not your own. You are bought with a price. You can't say what you want. Your tongue is not your own. Let me in and I will dine with you. Oh my God. That's why the Spirit of God needs to come upon the Lamb of God. Remember, Yeshua is the Lamb of God that takes over the sin at work. And the Spirit comes like a what again? What animal? A dove. So picture it a lamb and a dove. Beautiful picture of innocence and purity. The Spirit is not going to come upon the serpent. I said, The Spirit is not coming upon the serpent. The Spirit comes upon the Lamb. That's why you and I need to be Lamb-like. <laughs> but when you're letting that tongue like that serpent come out there, what spirit coming? You don't know what spirit you're up. If you want the Holy Spirit, you can say, Lord, make me to be like the Lamb of God. To open not its mouth. To win over the spouse without a word. Oh, my God. Like a lamb, right? Spirit of God, rest upon us. That's why for 49 days we're going through this teaching on pride, asking God to cleanse us from all pride. We may have started off like a big person, and now we are humbling ourselves before God. We are like a little child. And we still see that we have so much to learn. Oh, my God. The Spirit of God is needed for holy living. 
When you see the Spirit of God upon us, you and I cannot do this life, brethren, unless we're empowered by the Spirit of the living God. So look with me at Romans chapter 8. Look at this holy living that empowers us. Romans chapter 8, you know this text. Therefore, there's now no condemnation. There's no condemnation, brethren, but there's conviction. Can I say that again? I am not condemned. Yes, you're not condemned, but you're convicted. Go and sin no more. I don't condemn you, but I convict you. You can't continue in sin. I say I'm under grace. No, no. There's no condemnation, but there is strong conviction. When the Spirit of God comes, you would convict us of sin. Because we believe not on Yeshua the Messiah. When the Spirit of God has come, He would convict us of righteousness because He has gone to the Father. When the Spirit of God has come, He would convict us of judgment to come. Oh my God. There's no condemnation for those who are in Messiah Yeshua. For the Torah of the Spirit of life in Messiah has set us free from the law of sin of death. We are like a, a, a big plane that, that overcomes gravity and oving, moving into the air. For what was impossible for the Torah, since it was weakened on account of the flesh. Not as what weakened the Torah, not the Torah itself, our flesh. God has done, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as a sin offering, he condemns sin in the flesh. So that the requirement of the Torah, the written Torah, might be fulfilled, filled to the full in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. They eat, drink, and what to wear. They talk about this one, that one, and the other. That's the mind of the flesh. The mind of the spirit, you will talk to each other in Psalms. Oh, God. Hmm, verse 6. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the rock is life and shalom. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not submit itself to the Torah of God, for it cannot. It cannot of itself. That's why you need the Ruach HaKodesh to help us to submit. To live this holy life, brethren, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why in Ezekiel, and I refer to us Ezekiel 36, I will remove the heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And upon your heart I will write my Torah. The same Torah. May I say that again? Oh my God. Oh Father, help me. It is the same Torah. Amen. Not a different Torah. The same Torah. Hmm. I'm saying that again. But for those I was thinking, oh, you give us another Torah. No, it's the same Torah. All he has changed is the material on which the Torah is written on. Let me say that again. All that he has changed is the material on which he taught. You see, in Exodus, it was written on hearts of stone. On Mount, Mount Zion, it's written on hearts of flesh. The same Spirit of God is writing the same ten words, the same thing. So when you come and say, oh, I'm under grace, and I don't have to do this, you're grieving in Ruach HaKodesh, he's trying to encourage you to walk in this way. Because you feel you have another Torah. Oh my God. Help us. Edifying the community. The Spirit of God is needed for us to build up the community of faith. Build us up in our most holy faith. First Corinthians 12, we see that. We have the gifts of the Spirit to build us up. And I pray God for the operation of the Spirit to be in our midst. God, raise us up. Some with healing. Some with interpretation of tongues. Some with tongues. Some with wisdom. Some with knowledge. Some with discerning of spirit. Some with working of miracles. Activate the gifts of the Spirit in our midst, oh God. But please, Father, first, the fruit of the Spirit, oh God. Because if they start to operate in gifts and they become proud, I have to come and tell them, I'll show you a more excellent way. Use your gifts with humility. All gifted but no character, you would not be up here. All your gifts. Because remember, Master said, oh, in, my, in your name, I cast out devil. He said, depart from me, I don't know you. You have my gifts, but you don't have my character. Lord, help us. Bearing spiritual fruit. We need the gifts of the Spirit for spiritual fruit. We would have read it before. The gifts, the fruit of the Spirit, sorry, is, is, is joy and peace and love and patience. And can I tell you, the fruit is for others, not yourself. You don't bear fruit for yourself, you bear fruit for others. Somebody in the parking lot needs your patience. Somebody here needs your love. Somebody needs your gentleness. Somebody needs your patience. The fruit is for other people. Be laden with the Spirit. Have much fruit and have it low down so that they can get it. Some of us have fruit, boy, quite up to people can't get it. Bring it down low so they can get it. I could get that love. I could get that. It's acceptable. 
Oh, my father. Are you seeing the imagery? You need to be bearing spirit. Oh, my God. This text in 2 Peter, I want you to see this. This spiritual fruit. 2 Peter chapter 1. I believe God is laying upon my heart to do a, a teaching of this. May it come swiftly and soon. Now, for this very reason, making every effort. Add to your faith virtue. Notice it begins with faith. But add virtue. All right? And to virtue, add knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly love. And to brotherly love, love. Oh, my God. For if these qualities are in you and increasing, they keep you from becoming idle, oh, God, always on social media, and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. I want you to see the seven steps of spiritual growth right there. That's the counting of the Omer. It's seven steps the Apostle Peter gives us. And he said, it begins in faith. Faith is ground zero. And add this, and add this, and add this, and add this. And if you are bounding in it, you would enter the kingdom of God. That's what God is saying to us. You, you don't have to see these things. It is Musa. Watch your words. We are growing as a community. Oh, my God. 6-1 quickly is fostering unity, not uniformity. Fostering unity. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. We want to foster unity among us, not uniformity. We are not all in the same uniform. Right? We are not all yellow pencils, right? Oh, my God. Unity. But to each one of us, grace has been given. Not that, verse 1. Verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner from the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you were called. Verse 2. With complete humility and gentleness, with patience. Notice the fruit. Putting up with one another in love. I love it. Put up with this one now. You know this one has this quirk. You know this one, they're still working, but you've got to put up with them. And you get to do that in community. Making every effort to keep the unity of the Ruach in the bond of Shalom. It requires some effort. There is one body, one Ruach, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one immersion, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's the unity, and you've got to know the context of that chapter. It was written to a congregation of Jews and non-Jews. And he says, keep the unity of the Spirit. God is removing divisiveness and hostility. He's not removing distinction. And he sent us, keep the unity of the Spirit. Torah is not to be done in isolation. It's a mission that changes us. And you and I need to see the unity. Last night we were up reading, uh, studying the book of Ruth. Oh my God, for those of you who were able to stay up, I trust that you were blessed. You had major key takeaways. It was a blessing to be able to study all night. We so love God. And you know what? Oh my God, I'm sure most of you have wonderful takeaways. Eh? But there's one minister who came and he started to use typology. And I know about typology, eh? but I love how he began to use the typology with Ruth and Naomi. He said, Naomi is like Israel and Ruth is like the Gentile Christian church. And he began to show how, how, how Naomi still needs to teach Ruth. Oh my God. To my Christian brothers and sisters, you hear what I'm saying? I say, Naomi still needs to teach Ruth. Because Ruth, Naomi tells her, listen, go here. Prepare yourself. Oh, my God. Lie down by the man. Go by this field. Naomi is continually teaching Ruth of, of, to forsake her Moabite ways. And, oh, my God, come under the shaking of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you and I need to learn this. Humility, Gentile Christianity, you need to know that even if Naomi is bitter, even if Naomi hasn't accepted Yeshua yet, there are things that Naomi could teach Ruth if Ruth would humble herself. Naomi would teach Ruth, the Gentile, listen, I will teach you I love for family values. I will teach you love for life. I will teach you history and tradition. I will teach you how to affirm life. We give our lives to rescue lives. I will teach you, Ruth, how to approach the Jewish Messiah. Oh my God. I <laughs> say, Ruth, I have to teach you, Moabite girl, this one is not the cosmic Christ. He's the Jewish Jesus. You've got to understand this. You've got to go and lie down by him. And he's going to spread his zizit. Oh, my God. He's going to spread his talit over you. You've got to understand that you're coming to a Jewish Boaz. And um, Naomi, I'm going to have to teach you, Ruth. And if the church could humble themselves on this day of Shavuot, then Ruth would learn. 
and there would be a unity of mother and daughter in Torah, living the Hesed of God. But we come in there, little by little. I have hope, right? Baruch Hashem. Oh my God. Let me just close with this. Last one. Furthering the kingdom of God. We need the spirit to further the kingdom of God. The spirit of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in Romans 14. I want you to see this. No. Romans chapter 14. How do we further the kingdom of God in our midst? Well, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. When you go downstairs, <laughs> it's not about that. Let me say that again. Oneg is not about the kingdom of God. Oneg tells us how to live out the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. If you go downstairs and you get no food, and they start to complain, then you come here for eating and drinking. But if you go downstairs and you have no food, and you can still operate in righteousness, peace, and joy, my God, you are filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. And I'm saying, we've got to get it so many times. If they, if you, I, I, I don't like this, but they seem to be true. You tell them that there's food and they come. You give the food and they come. So are they coming for the food or are they coming for the fellowship? Are they coming for the swallowship or the fellowship? Oh my God. Brethren, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. It is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit. And I'm praying, God, as I close, that all of us would get this. Be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. Be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. Be praying that we would be a community filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. And tell your brother and sister if they're not filled. If you hear them murmuring and complaining, If you hear moment complaining, you know they're not filled. Tell them. Let's rise to our feet. Oh, Father. Mm. You want to be filled with the rock HaKodesh. Again and again. Notice, again and again and again and again and again. Be filled with the rock HaKodesh. Be filled community of disciples. Empty yourselves of yourselves. Clean the inside of the cup and be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. As our master was full of the spirit, so his body. The communities need to be full of the Ruach HaKodesh. We need to give evidence that the fruit is among us, that the gift is among us. We need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We go into the wilderness and we come out after these 40 days filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the spirit of the living God. You begin to talk to him, brethren. He is here. Receive a fresh infilling of the spirit of God again. Consider that you are a member of the body of Messiah. And even the little toe needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may consider yourself an eyebrow or a toenail. Regardless of what it is, you still need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may say, oh, all I do is put out food. You still need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Whether you read the Torah scroll or you sweep the carpet, you still need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you would just drop the food just so, ha! Hey. But if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you would put it neatly, decently, and in order, and with love. You would clean this carpet with love, with joy in your heart. You would, you, you would show for the presence of God with love. And this is what I'm praying for us now today, Father. You ask God for a fresh and filling of the Ruach HaKodesh. And make this promise before God that you would continually be filled with the Spirit. All during the day, say, Lord, fill me again with the Spirit. And make sure you empty yourself of yourself. But all during the day, ask Him, Lord, fill me again. And when you feel that animosity coming up, say, Lord, I repent, I confess, I empty myself, fill me again. All during the day. He says it's a continuous thing. Don't just leave it for when you come here on Shabbat. All during the day. Can I tell you, your life would be changed. Be being filled with the Spirit again and again and again and again and again. And yet I say again. Be continuously filled with God. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon them. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the fresh and filling of God. Receive the breath of God. Receive the fire of God to burn away all dross. 
Receive the comforting presence of God. Receive the wonders of God. Receive the power of the wonders of God, the wonders of his grace. Receive the spirit of the living God. Lead us by your good spirit. Teach us your ways. Send forth your spirit and renew us. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us, O God. On this day of Shavuot, write your Torah upon our hearts. Let the gifting of the Spirit be operated. Let us see signs and wonders done in the name of, the, of your holy servant, Yeshua. Let there be interpretation of tongues. Let there be discernments. Let there be fruit of the Holy Spirit. Fruitful community. Lord, we thank you that you are changing us by the power of your spirit. As we wait silently, is there any impression from the rock? Does anyone understand that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a song mind? Is there any word from the rock, Hakodesh? A corporate word for all of us. Let it be done decently and in order. If not, we go on. But don't be afraid if God is not you to say this. Speak it forth. For it's not you who speak, but the spirit of your Father who dwells in you. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in this place. For no flesh shall glory in my presence. Cease not to grieve. Cease grieving the Ruach HaKodesh. Whatever he tells you to do, do. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power but of love and a song man. For the Spirit of God has come to set the captives free. For son and daughter, you are free. From every besetting sin, you are free. For every dependence on the arm of flesh, you are free. From the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life, you are free. Walk in freedom. For the Spirit of God is setting you free. Mm. God be among us. And there's someone here who is overcome by your limitations. I sense that you're thinking, oh my God, I'm overcome by these limitations. I can't do this or that. My, my mind seems to not remember as much. But God says, even your limitations, give it to me. I am God. spoke to my mother-in-law who is blind at this point. She said, Angus, I'm in darkness. And the rock minister to me, tell her, I am your light and your salvation. Even blindness, even darkness, humble yourself. Don't let your limitations cripple you. Find a text that you could relate to. So you're, you're losing your sight. Well, God is your light and your salvation. So you're forgetting. So what? God says, even when you forget the sheep, don't go back. Let your forgetfulness be a praise unto God. As you grow like a little child, you will become more dependent upon him. You murmur and complain because you rely on yourself too much. You don't trust me. You want me to help you find a spouse, but you don't call upon me to find a button. I'm the same God. I am not limited. But if you rely upon me, I will help you. I will help you. Father, we pray 
for eyesight to be restored. But we also pray that those who are losing their eyesight would not be overcome by that, but would overcome it and recognize that darkness is light to you. And know that I'm removing the armor of flesh from beside you so that you would learn to rely upon me and me alone. For the armor of flesh will fail you. So don't be afraid. Don't be condemned. The Spirit of God helps our infirmities. If we could acknowledge them as infirmities. If you acknowledge them as infirmities, He would help you. Don't try to boast and justify. Just humble yourself. You. That's why I'm here, to help you. That decision that you have to make, I will guide you. When you turn to the left or to the right, you will hear my voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. On this Shavuot, I pray God that all of us would receive a fresh and filling of the rock of the way. And you will give evidence that you are faith. Think about a psalm. I want each of you now to think about one verse of psalm. One verse. For those of you who don't know, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm helping you. My the Spirit of God help your infirmities. All right? Good. And I, when I give you the, 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 the signal, I want you to just shout that verse of Psalm. Whatever it may be. For those who don't know, I said I give you one, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So, let's praise him with Psalm. Lord, open our lips that our mouth may declare your praise. One, two, three. Shout. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Amen and amen. Baruch Hashem. Wonderful. Wonderful. God is not confused by all of that. He knows exactly. Oh my God.